why not a living building and what would it do for us to be part of this incredible team to learn with them, to have our kids learn with them, to have our kids be part of it and to just really have a building which actually is yet an amazing learning tool. A living building is a structure that's rooted in its place. The idea really comes from the metaphor of a flower. A flower is able to use all the resources on site. It's able to harvest its own water for growth. It's able to harvest sunlight for energy. And it really doesn't take away from the landscape. In fact, it adds to it. Um, it's a, the first living building 2.0 project in the world and something that KMD really took um, a big risk on in terms of being the first to actually try to achieve that standard. I think the Birchie School has really set up uh, a great potential for us as designers here at KMD. We've certainly learned a lot about the standards of the Living Building Challenge and doing projects that are really giving back to uh, their surrounding environment. We will not succeed in delivering a living building unless we truly practice integrated design and really taking that challenge to do that as a means for greater sustainable outcomes. Once we had the team and the client, we came back to KMD and met with um, our directors and said, here's that crazy idea we've come up with. Uh, we want to do a project for free in Seattle. We want to do it to a sustainability standard that hasn't been done here before. Um, and uh, will you let us do that? Anytime you're out front, you have to pull the uh, manufacturing community along with you to try to get to the next level uh, of producing uh, sustainable products. I have to really thank a lot to KMD and how you all invited our children to become part of the team by interviewing them in what their mission is for the building and why a living building. A net zero energy building is a structure that's able to take all of the energy that falls on its site and turn that into electricity. Through this black box here, the students are able to see the exact running tally of how much energy is being used on a daily basis. They're getting instantaneous feedback. Some of the most inspiring parts for us was actually getting the kids involved in the design process. And a lot of their ideas had to do with um, water, actually. So the water runs through the river, all the way through the classroom space, and then enters the eco house. This whole system on the wall here is the potable water treatment system, where there's a series of filters and um, UV um, compartments that actually treat the water to potable standards. There's the rain that falls directly on the metal roof of the building, which is what we can collect and is the highest quality um, essentially gray water or water that we can then reuse. Uh, we also collect any used water from the sinks uh, and uh, the various classroom uses that go on and feed that back in to help water the plants such as our green wall. So we have something growing that's actually functioning uh, and filtering gray water. Uh, the, the water closet itself is a composting style toilet, meaning that instead of going to a sewer or a septic field, it goes to a composting bin. When I hear parents say, well, you know, because of my children, we really are doing a very good waste management program in our house. And because of our children, we are very careful in how we use water. I think they feel like they have ownership of this building because so many of their ideas have been incorporated into the living building. So speaking about the planting party, it's like a controlled chaos event where the kids come out, we don't have a lot of time with them, we have to get them invested, and then we have to get them excited, and then we have to get them out here and, and stick plants in the ground. And then the best part was, after school, as the kids walked by with their parents, all of them were stopping, or even before they could get in the car to drive home, they were coming by, oh, there's the plant I put in, that's the one that we did. These kids go to school in this classroom, and expectations evolve. For them, this is a given. Reconnecting building occupants and users to the source of our energy and our water. It's that empowerment of our, and understanding if we have solar panel and we measure the energy on a weekly basis and we know we are net zero energy, we can do it. The most exciting part about working in a school is that you're, you're getting the influence of the next generation of thinkers. Empowering the children that they actually can make a difference.